Expanded is one of the more useful widgets in Flutter for creating flexible UIs. Expanded is mostly used with rows and columns and the way it works is that it takes up the remaining space when all the other child elements have been added to a row or a column. So let's take a look at how it works with an example. In this tutorial, we have the screen in which we have the top bar, a container, and two list views which take their specific space in this UI. Although this UI is not good for applications, but this will help you understand how you can use Expanded in your own applications. Right now, I'm in a blank application with this one screen which has a scaffold that is wrapped in a safe area and we have a column for the body of the scaffold. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to add that top bar to the UI. For this, I'm going to add row as the first child of the column and in this row, I'm going to add the children property. For the first child of this row, I'll add the icon button and in this, I'll add an icon with the icon of menu. For the on pressed, I'll pass an empty function I'll duplicate this icon button and for the second icon button, I can set the icon to person. You can see that we have the two icons in the top left of the screen. What we want to do now is we want to add a text between these two icons and we need to move the second icon to the right of the screen. For this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a text between these two icons. For now, I'll add a simple text that says expanded and in this, I'll pass a style that sets the font weight to bold and the font size to 20. You can see that we have the text between the two icons. We want the text to be in the center and the icon to be on the right. For this, the first thing that comes to mind is to add the main axis alignment property to the row and set the main axis alignment to space between. With this, we have the required top bar behavior. With this, we have all the elements right where we want them to be. But since this tutorial is all about expanded, I'll just remove this main axis alignment from the row and instead I'll show you another way to get the same behavior. What we can actually do is we can wrap this text that says expanded with an expanded widget. And at this point, if I save the app, you can see that the icon moves towards the right, but the text remains at the left. The way this happens is because the expanded widget takes all the remaining space between these two icons. The way to prove this is that I can wrap this text with a container and then give a color to this container and set it to colors.green. With this, you can see that expanded widget is taking all the remaining space between these two icons. I'll remove this container and to center the text, I'll wrap this text with a center widget. And with this, we have the required behavior of all widgets in the row. After this, I need to add a container. So what I'll do is I'll come below the row and here I'll add a container. And in this, I'll set the height to 200. And with this, I'll set the color to colors.blue. Now we have two elements on the screen and we want to give the remaining space to two list views. For this, I'll come below the container and here I'll add a list view using listView.Builder. Now the listView.Builder requires an item builder which takes a function that gives us the context and the item index. In the body of this function, I'll return a list tile and in this I'll set the title to a text widget and in the text I'll pass in the string that says list tile with that particular index. After this, I'll add the item count property to the listView.Builder and in this, I'll give an item count of 20. Now watch what happens. As soon as I save the app, you can see that there is nothing on the screen. And if I go to the run window, you can see that we have a bunch of errors. If I go to the topmost error, you can see that this says vertical viewport was given unbounded height. The reason for this is that the column widget does not give any height constraint to its children. And what we want to do is we want the list view to take all the remaining space in the column. I'm sure you have guessed by now. What we can do is we can wrap the listView.Builder with an expanded widget. And just by doing this, when we save the app, you can see that the list view appears and we can easily scroll through all the items. And now we'll add the second list view. For this, I'll copy the previous listView.Builder with the expanded widget and paste it right below this. And as soon as I save the app, you can see that we have two list views that take exactly half of the remaining space. Now just to add a differentiating factor between these two list views, what I'll do is I'll go to the list tile of the second list view and in here I'll add the property of tile color. For this I'll pass in colors.gray with an opacity of 0.5. With this you can easily differentiate between the two list views. Now what we want to do is we want to make the first list view take two thirds of the remaining space. For this what we can simply do is we can add a flex property to the expanded and for the first list view, we set the flex to 2. And for the second list view, we set the value of flex for the expanded to 1. With this, when I save the app, you can see that the first list view takes 2 thirds of the remaining space and the second list view takes only 1 third of the remaining space. 
Now the way flex works is that with the flex of 2, this expanded widget will take the height with the ratio of this flex value divided by the total flex given to the both expanded widgets. So the ratio of height for this expanded is 2 divided by 2 plus 1, that is 2 third of the remaining space. Now there is one more thing you need to keep in mind. The expanded widget takes into account the total available space on the screen, with the help of which it calculates the remaining space and then gives the size to its child widget accordingly. So if I go to the column widget and I wrap this with a single child scroll view, you can see that suddenly everything disappears from the screen. The reason for this is that with the single child scroll view, the view becomes scrollable and hence the expanded widgets get infinite height. And because of this, there's no way for the Flutter UI to render. So always keep in mind that make your Flutter UIs in a way that each of the widget has a defined boundary. For now, I'll remove this single child scroll view and with this, we have a working UI. I hope you find this video useful and for more videos in Flutter Widget Essential series, consider subscribing to RetroPortal Studio and follow me on Twitter for future updates. See you next time. Peace.